Hey everyone, it's Alex and today I'm here with my October and November reading wrap up. And this is actually the reading wrap up for October and November of 2021. I plan to go back and do the rest of them, but I figured as the months pass, I should probably just continue to do the ones in the present as well so that they too don't become over a year overdue. As always with these videos now, I have a tiny demon cat running around, making noise, causing trouble. This is what we live with. You'll be able to hear her, I'm sorry, but there's really nothing I can do because she's gonna run around like a demon no matter what. I read how many books? Seven books? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven books in the months of October and November, all of which were from my shelf. So that's really good. Um, seven books off my shelf. Not particularly great reading months for me, but I'm quite pleased with them because I haven't been reading a lot lately. So let's just get straight into these books. The first book that I read in October was The Rape of Nanking by Irish Chang. This is a nonfiction book about, obviously, the rape of Nanking. During World War II, when Japan invaded China, they occupied the city of Nanking in China and wound up massacring hundreds of thousands of people there, mostly Chinese civilians, some military, mostly civilians. And it's a truly horrifying, tragic event. I had heard of this before, like I knew it had happened, but that's about where my knowledge stopped. So reading this book was really, really eye-opening because it's one thing to know that like a massacre happened in a city 80 years ago. It's another to just read all the graphic details of it. This book was really, really wonderful. I gave it four stars. It was such a hard read just in terms of how graphic it was. Like I would put that warning up right up front because it was painfully graphic. I found it really hard to read and I usually don't have a problem with books, but it was graphic in terms of rape and sexual assault. It was also graphic in terms of torture and murder and starvation and pretty much every horrible thing you can think of that military would do to civilians during an occupation. It was, it was horrifically graphic. And there's also, in my book at least, there's a section of pictures in the middle that were also horrifically graphic that I honestly kind of regret looking at. And I normally don't have a problem with reading things of a graphic nature. Like I'll comment on it sometimes just so people are aware when I'm discussing the books, but it rarely bothers me beyond like making me kind of uncomfortable in a way that you should be uncomfortable. This was really disgusting to read and really, really hard to read. So I do just want to like emphasize that because Iris Chang goes into great specific detail on what happened to like individual people and families and also just things that were happening in general. So just keep that in mind if you want to pick up this book, but it was so, so well done. I think this book's strength is as an introduction for people who don't have a great deal of knowledge because it does read a lot like a basic overview which I think was part of the reason I gave it four stars. And it's hard to hold that against a book because that's what it's actively trying to do. It's meant to be an introduction to people, but I do think that was kind of like why I didn't love it quite to like the five star level because it doesn't go into a lot of detail or a lot of depth on like a variety of subjects. It kind of just touches on everything so that you have a really good overview of what happened, but doesn't delve super deeply into pretty much any of them. It'll be like, oh, here's five pages on this topic or five pages on this person. And then we'll move on to the next topic or person and like so forth through the book. So that made it a little bit, I, I just like things really in depth, really slow. And this was, this was definitely more of an overview, but it was so good. And I learned so much and it's really well written. Like this made me want to look up more of Irish Chang's works. I know she only wrote a few things because she did die young, but I think if they're all kind of similar to this, they'd be really, really worthwhile reads. And I, I can't recommend this book enough. It was so wonderful and so informative. Even if it was really hard, it was so worthwhile. Then I read The Other Daughter by Lisa Gardner. This is one of Lisa Gardner's many thrillers, most of which at this point I have read. I try to make it through most of her books. 
This was probably one of my least favorites. I gave it two stars. This is about a girl who was adopted when she was about nine years old. Her family originally had two children and their daughter was kidnapped and murdered by a serial killer. And this book is pretty much about her coming to grips with her past and her family's past and what happened to essentially the sister she never knew. I just didn't love this book. I think what Lisa Gardner usually excels at spleen is her books being so readable and the writing style just being very I don't want to say simplistic but just you don't think about it like it's there but you're so consumed by the story that the writing style is kind of secondary and it takes a really good writing style to sort of take a back seat in that way for me and I love that but with this book the writing was so choppy and so jumpy and so strange almost that I found myself having to reread passages just to understand what was happening and it it didn't make a whole lot of sense and I found myself frustrated just by the writing itself. I also didn't think the plot was particularly great. It felt very manufactured and obvious and I guess what the main plot twist was going to be before we got to the big red herring plot twist that very obviously wasn't the actual answer. And a lot of the book was kind of centered around sort of past crimes and insurance fraud and not so much like things were happening today but things had happened in the past and we were delving into those and I felt like it wasn't particularly well done. I wanted more happening in the present than the past and it felt like the vast majority of this book was taking place in the past apart from like the main character breaking down and crying a lot which I would have minded less except they kept describing her as really stoic and someone who didn't like to cry and I really hate when they describe a character one thing the first time you in the first time you're introduced to them and then as the book goes on they just keep contradicting that like don't describe a character as one thing and then have them clearly acting different through the entire book I find that really frustrating and just in general this book felt really like melodramatic and over the top and like everyone here could have taken a chill pill and things would have been much easier a lot of the big dramatic moments towards the end didn't necessarily make sense or fit with the characters' personalities that we'd been introduced to so far. Like the way they were described, the way they had acted, their past actions really didn't add up to the ending and the climax of this book and I just found it a little bit annoying and a little bit just too much kind of. It wasn't too bad, like it was fine. Um, it held my attention while I was reading it. It was just, it kind of got to a point where it was tiresome and this isn't one I'm going to be thinking about. I think she has much better books and I believe this is her second book that she ever published so it's hard to be too mad about that and it is interesting to see how much she's grown as a writer in all these years. Then I read Sarah's Key by Tatiana de Rosne. This is a historical fiction book set in Paris in the 1940s. A Jewish girl and her family are rounded up during one of the big Parisian roundups by Paris police. And then in the present day, the main character is sort of realizing that her family's apartment has this past that she hadn't known about and that a Jewish family had lived there. And she decides to track down what happened to the family and specifically the daughter who she believes might still be alive. I gave this four stars. I thought it was really lovely. Like this is one of those books that I would just recommend if you like this kind of book. It wasn't necessarily one of my favorites. I think it was kind of a light four stars for me, but it was just so wonderful to read. Like I loved this book while I was reading it. I think for me it faded a little bit fast. Like if you've ever read a book and you really enjoy the experience while you're reading it and then as soon as you finish it it's like okay your mind snaps and you move on. It wasn't one that really had much staying power for me which I feel like makes me feel a little bit more negative towards it now than I did kind of when I was reading it but my biggest problem was the chapters. I don't know how many times on this channel I've complained about short chapters. I don't like short chapters and I especially hate short chapters that alternate point of view. In this book we alternated between the girl in the past, Sarah, and 60 years later the journalist who's now living in the apartment that Sarah's family had lived in. 
and it felt like every two or three pages we just switched between them and it didn't give me any chance to get involved in them or get invested in their story or their characters and at the point you stuck with the journalist in the present day and that was sort of the point where I got a lot more into the book because I was like mentally able to sink into the story like I really did like Sarah's part in the past but it was just hard for me. I also struggled just a little bit with what almost felt like the purposelessness of the story. Like the main character wants to figure out what happened in the past and what happened to these people who used to live in her apartment. But beyond just like the curiosity of figuring out that mystery, it didn't really seem like there was much reason for her to be invested in this. It didn't feel like she had a true purpose in figuring this out apart from like, oh, well, the story has to unfold in this way. She has to care about this. But it didn't really make sense to me that she did care so much, just like her own personal motivations. But I did really love it. I found it really touching and heartbreaking and just, I devoured this. I think I read it in two days, which is the fastest I've read any book recently. I just didn't want to put it down. I found myself always wanting to pick it up just to like see what was happening to these people, these characters. And I, I love that feeling in a book. If a book can make me feel that, then it's done most of its job. I also really loved how realistic it felt compared to a lot of other novels. Like Tatiana de Rosny made some choices in this that I think were harder choices for fiction that left things feeling like you didn't get all of that closure necessarily or things didn't wrap up neatly. And I don't mean like in the ending with like the big dramatic plot twist, but I mean just throughout the book it felt like she made some harder choices and I, I really, really appreciated that because I like books that have just like some of the small aspects feel a little bit more down to earth and not quite so, you know, over the top or dramatic or coincidental the way fiction sometimes can. But I, I would highly recommend this book if you like sort of, I don't know, World War II fiction. Then I read American Wife by Curtis Sittenfeld. This is probably my favorite book that I've read recently. This was amazing. This was wonderful. I gave it four stars, but it was just so, so lovely. I loved almost everything about this book. And I've actually, since reading this, bought two more books by Curtis Sittenfeld because I was that excited to read more of her. I thought this was absolutely lovely and wonderful. This is a historical fiction-ish, mostly, novel. Um, that's loosely based on Laura Bush, who was the husband of George W. Bush, who was president from 2000 to 2008, I think, math, those eight years, that's nine years, 2001 to 2008, I think. Um, any, regardless, it's about Laura Bush, and it's sort of loosely based on her life in the sense of, like, if you knew about Bush, and you read Laura Bush's Wikipedia summary, that's about the amount of truth in this book, I feel like, which is not a negative. I'm not saying that as a negative at all. It's just Curtis Sittenfeld, like, got inspired by the idea of Laura Bush and, like, some big things that happened in her life and her becoming president, the president's wife. And it's just loosely based on her, but also close enough that you can tell. And that was my biggest complaint about this book. Otherwise, it's just this really interesting character study of a woman from her early years up through teenage years. Tragedy happens. She finds out things about her grandmother that she'd never known. She becomes a librarian, etc, etc. It's just her life. And she's also based on a real person. <laughs> I love the writing style in this. I thought it was gorgeous. I love the slow pace of this book. I love books that are slow, dramatic character studies, which is what this book was. This is like the perfect book for me. I was just made uncomfortable by the fact that it was based on a real person. It just, the kind of thing, like, if someone had wrote, written a book like this that was inspired by my life, that like wasn't literally about me, they blatantly said it was fiction, but it was like inspired by me, I would be intensely uncomfortable. And I can't imagine like writing a book like this about someone else. It kind of feels like, you know, like real person fan fiction, which the idea of that makes me really uncomfortable. And also just in like a shallow sense, there were sex scenes in this book, which like were not graphic in terms of like sex scenes in novels. 
I wouldn't have thought twice about it except for the fact that I was now thinking about sex with George Bush which was not something I would really like to be thinking about. I don't particularly want to read a paragraph describing his penis. Like, I'm not like saying that's a bad thing to do. It's just a very shallow thing that made me uncomfortable in this book. And the further we got along, the harder it was to pretend like it wasn't actually Laura Bush and George Bush. So that made me uncomfortable. But like beyond that, if you can get past that, which I did for most of this book, as much as I complain about it, I really was able to get past that and just get into this character's head and experience her life. And it was so interesting and so fascinating and so well written that I would really highly recommend this book. I thought it was absolutely wonderful. And then moving on to the worst book that I've read recently, <laughs> Killer Smile by Lisa Scottelyn. This is the second Lisa Scottelyn book I've ever read and the second one I've ever given one star to. So that was lovely. This is a thriller about a woman who works for a law firm. It's one of Lisa Scottaline's series, and I think I read, might have read one other book in the series. I don't remember. But essentially this woman is a lawyer and she's investigating this case of what happened to this Italian man who wound up in a concentration camp in America in the 40s and he died he committed suicide and she's just investigating that to see if she can get any benefits for his family this book was boring um it was so boring most of this was about a really old murder case and a lot of patent law and it just went on and on and on and at one point one of her friends and her were like role playing a patent case with a judge and it didn't really make sense. Nothing happened. People got murdered, but no one you cared about, no one you really knew very well. Maybe you cared more if you read the series, I don't know, but I found it incredibly dull and boring, and I don't even want to check my notes to say anything more about this book, because like, it was just nothing. It was so nothing and so boring, and I'm just glad it was over at a point. I could look at my notes and say something worthwhile, but I really don't want to. This book doesn't really deserve that in my opinion. Then I read The Lost Orphan by Stacey Halls. I read An Uncorrected Proof. This was later published under The Foundling, so if you're looking for it now, it might be better to check under The Foundling, I believe. Unless that's just the British edition. Don't know. Um, this is a historical fiction book set in London in the 1750s about a teenage girl who gives up her newborn infant to a foundling hospital. Six years later, she comes back with the intent of collecting her daughter to find that someone else has already claimed her, claiming to be the mother and using her name. And it also follows a wealthy woman who's looking for a nursemaid for her daughter who stays inside all the time and is afraid of the world. I gave this book three stars. I didn't think it was bad so much as I felt like there wasn't enough of it. Like this is a very short book. There are two point of view characters. There's so much happening. There needs to be so much nuance for a book that centers so much around motherhood and just like what it means to be a mother. And it felt like too much of this book was black and white and things happened much too quickly. I loved the beginning. Like the beginning was really wonderful to me. I got invested in what's her name? Bess. I got invested in Bess's character so quickly. I loved her story. I loved her perspective. I wanted to follow her and see what happened. And then all of a sudden we switched over to Alexandra's story and I was much less invested in her character. She wasn't a poorly written character. She just didn't interest me personally the way that Bess did, which made reading this book kind of difficult and annoying because I found myself just waiting to get back to Bess and Bess's story and just tired of Alexandra's. And then it just felt like things sped up at a point. Like you were introduced to Bess over like 70 pages and then introduced to Alexandra over 70 pages and then the book was two thirds over so we needed to wrap everything up real quick at the end. And it needed a lot more time. It felt like these people who'd met like twice, who'd spent a total of like eight pages together were suddenly like, oh, I'm getting married. Oh, we're getting married. We're in love. And it's like, you what? Like, that doesn't make sense. And I think I was more 
disappointed in this book than I was like then I disliked it. Like my disappointment was because this book could have been so good because I really did enjoy so much about it and it had so much potential for me to love it and then I just didn't. So it wasn't like it was bad, it was just disappointing to me more than anything else. But it did leave me with the feeling that I might be much more interested in checking out some of Stacey Hall's other books and especially if she's written something longer that I might enjoy that more but this was not the book for me. Like I said earlier, I really, really prefer a slow paced, drawn out story. And this was so fast, so much happened, and it felt like so much character development was skipped over just to get to the points that I was just kind of tiring myself out reading it. And then the final thing that I read in October and November was If You Knew My Sister by Michelle Adams. This is also an uncorrected proof, so perhaps these books were improved post-releasing the proof. I don't know. My guess would be no. My issues with them were sor more, sort of more major than that, but you know. I didn't read the final edition of either of these, so you never know. This is a thriller about a girl who receives a phone call in the middle of the night saying that her mother has died. It's from her sister, and her sister is kind of a toxic, abusive personality. Her sister manipulates everyone around her, it seems to be kind of psych psychopathic, and it's just about that. Her mother, her parents gave her up as a child so she never really knew her family much. She was raised by an aunt and she wants to figure out why. So she goes back home for her mother's funeral, meets her father, hangs out with her sister, drama and bad things ensue. So I gave this two stars. I was not very impressed. I hated the characters in this book. They were all so flat and so like awkward kind of. Like they didn't make sense as people. Nothing they did really made any sense. It was like they needed a lot more nuance to them. Like they did things because like things were supposed to happen in the book for it to progress. But it was like at one point the main character went to the gym and met this guy. Her sister left with another guy so she was like oh you and me should probably hang out then. I think his name was Matt or something. So she and Matt went to a coffee shop and they just started like immediately telling each other their deepest, darkest secrets and fears and everything inside their soul, which was like really weird and made no sense. She wants to play with her laser pointer now. Give me like three minutes, little girl. I'm just trying to wrap up this video. But it was like, you don't just go to a coffee shop with a random guy and then tell him, oh, I'm so concerned about my parents giving me up as a child. It keeps me awake at night. Like, things that she apparently had never told anyone else. And it was just like, that was how every interaction in this book was. It just didn't fit with actual, like, human interaction. At one point, I was kind of wondering whether the psychopath was her sister or her, because she acted so strangely and just with out regard for like normal human emotion either hers or anyone else's but it was just so strange and then the story itself was just really really obvious and generic i don't super mind guessing plot twists most of the time but there's kind of a point where it's not even a plot twist anymore it's just like the normal progression of the story. Like, why do you think her parents gave her up when she's got a psychopathic sister? There's really not much more to it than that. There's not much more towards this story than that. And it was so nothing and so boring. And I'm sorry the camera's shaking, but I have a little demon over here. I was disappointed by this book. It could have been something good. It could have been more. It was just kind of a very generic overtold story. It was very melodramatic and then I felt like the ending didn't have enough closure. There weren't enough answers for how long I sat through this book and how boring it was. I wanted more and it just kind of ended with the main character shrugging and saying that she guessed she knew enough and that was fine and I was kind of disgusted by that. I found this book annoying and I really couldn't find it in my heart to recommend it to anyone unless the final copy was a lot different than this. But those are the seven books that I read in October and November. Let me know if you've read any of those, if you liked any of them, if you hated any of them. 
let me know down below. As always, thank y'all so much for watching and I will see y'all again soon.